My guest today is Dr. Julie Glick. Her company is Musicians Hearing Solutions. So you might guess that she works with musicians. I met her eight years ago when she was working in New York. A couple of years ago, she left New York, unfortunately, certainly for me, and moved to Beverly Hills. But anyway, she was back in New York to, to do some business here, so we got together and made a video. And we really, <laughs> we have some kind of connection here. But anyway, she's worked with some of the, some of the biggies in the music business, like Jay-Z, Kanye, uh, Springsteen, Graham Nash, uh, a lot of heavyweights fitting in-ear monitors and doing audiograms and all that sort of stuff that audiologists do. But I said, Julie, you're in a unique position to tell me what's the difference between what East Coast and West Coast audiophiles are looking for and uh, engineers and musicians. Is there a difference between East Coast and West Coast? I think there might be. I hope you find this conversation as interesting as I did having it with Julie. So let's get to it. So what do musicians say they want? As far as in-ear monitors? The sound of their headphones. What, they want it to be brighter? They want it to be more bassy? What, what do they want? So that just depends on what they're playing, really. I okay. mean, a vocalist is always going to say they want to hear themselves. Okay. <laughs> and that's going to be more MIDI, more clarity. Mm -hmm. um, a drummer probably wants more warmth, more bass punch. Okay. Um, a bass player, also mm -hmm. more bass punch typically. Mm -hmm. But engineers typically want something more even. Okay, a flatter so, response. So, a flatter response. But, uh, you know, and I always tell everyone that with in-ears, you want to make sure, though, that you have enough warmth because the engineer can always take down the warmth. You can't add it in. So, um, for in-ear monitors as a okay. tool for performing live, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's why I have the demo unit. So then um, from all the main companies, JH Audio, this is in no particular order, but JH Audio, 64 Audio, Ultimate Ears, Sensophonic. So I have all the demo units of all their products. So when you come in, we can demo them um, before right. they're customized to make sure. Which is, which is pretty cool. Un unfortunately, this is just in Beverly Hills, not here in New York anymore. Unfortunately. But, but so people, because people always say, can I hear them? And the answer is usually no, but if they visit you, if they visit me, they, they can. can. They yeah, can. and I like to do blind taste tests, um, not tell them what they're listening to, ah. just go by budget and what they think the sound quality they want, which oftentimes it changes when we demo. So, Interesting. yeah, people will say they don't want a lot of warmth, but they actually do. So it wow. happens all the time. Or they come in with a preconceived notion based on, like, what someone else says that they, they should get, and they end up liking something else. So it's really actually important, I think. I like this. They can do blind tests. You can I do a blind say, one, yeah. Jerry Harvey, Ultimate Ears? I do. I do side by side. And, I, and then based on what they say and their feelings about um, how they sound, I'll pick something else. And yeah, so I tell them not to look. And, you know, because I don't want them to have a preconceived yeah, notion. Yeah, yeah. I just want them to go by their gut. Sometimes it saves people money. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> I try to, you know, we yeah, stay yeah. within. So, so now that you have a lot of experience on the East Coast and a lot of experience on the West Coast, is there a difference? between the overall trend towards East Coast musicians versus West Coast musicians? The musicians, well, or, you know. Or audiophiles. Well, I can say this. So, you know, the, my business concept of having all the companies mm -hmm. in one place is unique for Los Angeles. And I work with everybody. So I think people are still, you know, learning. I'm only a year and a half um, up in business in Los Angeles, so I think people are still learning about mm. my concept of having everyone in one place. Everyone, Whereas, you mean all the I brands. mean all the companies, yeah. yeah. Learning about options. I think actually, I think a lot of times musicians don't realize they have options. Okay. So they might go by what their engineer says is right for them, or um, which can be fine too, um, or what a friend says. Um, so you know the concept of being. I mean, everyone loves it. Um, to be able to choose for themselves, I think is, is unique. And I think, again, because my, that concept didn't exist until I set up shop in LA, I think, you know, people are learning more about how they can, right. you know, hear. So it's good. Yeah. So like it's a good flavor thing for they them. like. Exactly. And it's all good. Mm -hmm. It's like choosing between, you know, high end this, high end that. So it's all good no matter what, because right. these are all the top companies. So, um, and what about engineers? They're they're more persnickety about sound. They are, yeah. Engineers typically are, but they also usually want something nice and clean, um, more even sounding. Typically, that's what engineers. They will say want. that, but do they wind up buying different things? 
No, they usually are right on it. So each oh, company really? has their own version of, <laughs> okay. of not necessarily even reference, but just more even, right? Okay. So they don't necessarily. So okay, but in that sense, can, we can name specific models for yeah. Ultimate Ears and, and Jerry Harvey. Sure. So for an ultimate for for Ultimate Ears, the the clean one, the reference one, the engineer one would be the the Capital, Capital. Records yeah. uh, reference, the reference remastered. Right. Yeah. So for sixty four <laughs> audio. Yeah. It's the it's the six T or the eighteens. Okay. Those are different price points. Eighteen T. So they just came out with a new 18 that's a little bit different. So the 18 T is, is you know, nice and even. And then the 6. Okay. Um, and then um, JH Audio, of course, the Layla goes to reference mastering quality. Mm -hmm. um, and Sensophonics, of course, their 2X um, dual driver is, is reference quality, too. Okay. So, okay. So I'll ask the same question in a different way. So any difference between older and younger engineers? Older and younger engineers or musicians. Or musicians, you pick. Well, old, the older generation, just in general, I just think people, they're, you know, they've been exposed to vinyl. They've been exposed to, they know, you know, the better sound quality from, from growing up. So I think that they're more aware of, of that type of sound quality and the difference that compressed sound makes. Huh. So, because they, they've lived it, right? Mm -hmm. So... Um, but you know, then there's always people who are, if you're into it, you're into it. So, right. um, but engineers typically always are right. right? But yeah, musicians, <laughs> musicians in general, I mean, I'm, I, first thing I always say, okay, do you have your music to listen to? Okay. What kind of file do you have? They're like, I don't know. It's on Apple or it's this. I'm like, well, we got to listen to title at least. Right. So, you know, we, so I make them enlighten them and in, in the differences in the streaming services right. and, the, and, the, and the quality. And then, of course, I pull out my Estelle and Current player um, for the highest res, especially for musicians. You don't want to demo um, in your monitors using compressed mm -hmm. sound because sure. that's not how it's going to be when they're performing. So, yeah, yeah so I just think um, I just think it's what they're used to and what they know of. Mm -hmm. And it just depends also how into sound quality people are, right. which is different than maybe making music. It's a different thought process absolutely right <laughs> musicians which I, I want I wish I was a musician uh, seem to th think about music in a completely different way yes and not the non musicians uh, musicians seem to listen for performance how well it's being played you know arrangements they're listening right. to the way it's being played not how it sounds how real does it sound this goes like over their head they're not really listening for that. yeah I mean I think in general audiophiles are way more into that than right. musicians right. they're hearing the you know the spatial all sorts of things right. I mean just you know how it's um, plays in their headspace you know it's with oh, the yeah. in-ears right and then the details um, they're yeah definitely more into it right so we're, we're sort of at opposite ends right the musicians yeah. are listening to how the music's being played. Or maybe how they, they can sound. Say, they can say what kind of strings are on that Stratocaster. They got that. Right. right. But they're oblivious to the other things. And then, of course, the, the non-musicians have no idea whether it's the Stratocaster or Les Paul or anything. Right. They just know it's an electric guitar. But they know about the, the, the warmth, the body, the space. Et exactly. All your so words. We're, we're, we're doing opposite <laughs> stuff. Yes. So that's pretty interesting. But anyway, you, you, to get back to younger, older, because you know, one of the things I was thinking about younger versus older is it's interesting that, ob well, it's not interesting. Obviously, older people have uh, reduced high frequency hearing compared to younger people. Right. But to me, saying that, that older people are more likely to complain about a recording or a speaker or a headphone being bright, and, and younger people, seems to be oblivious to the harshness of compressed recordings like that goes right past them and yet they can hear the 20k or something and i can't so again we're it, we appear to be listening to different things yeah i mean i think um you know you you, you lose the high frequencies yes no, no one's immune to that as we get older the first thing to go in with your hearing are the higher frequencies. And on top of that, noise exposure can double down on it. So, mm -hmm. but it also can make you sensitive to, to high frequencies, mm -hmm. um, which can be different than hearing loss. Okay. So, um, I think, I, I also think too, like with, you know, like Beats and all sorts of headphones geared toward the younger market, they're very like muddy and, and warm sounding. Mm -hmm. So perhaps they, 
muffle or, yeah. or you know, mask out the high frequencies yeah. because of that warmth. That's yeah, I think it's it's too because of the just the the sensitivity to higher higher frequency sounds as you get older. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> something called hyper. I mean, if you're a musician, you're exposed to a lot of loud sound. Uh, something that's pretty common is something called hyperacusis, which mm -hmm. is just that. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's the sensitivity to 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 either louder sounds or higher frequency sounds. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that can be just with normal hearing, right. but just that added sensitivity. So that's why older, older people are more sensitive to bright recordings or Could bright, be a reason, right? yeah. And, and younger people are less sensitive. Even though they can have more high frequency extension, they can be less sensitive to the annoyance part. Exactly. You know. So from there we go, since speaking of loud and stuff, so what percentage of the, the people you see, the musicians you see, over a certain age have tinnitus? I would say it's probably somewhere between, it's probably around, I would say on average 50. 50. 50%. 50%. Wow. Yeah. yeah. We're talking about musicians? Yeah. Or, or non-musicians. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, unfortunately. Musicians are generally more exposure to loud sound right. than non-musicians. Yes. So you introduced me to... Benj Cantor. Benj Cantor. Yeah. And he did a talk that I went to in New York and he talked about uh, tinnitus and hearing loss among musicians. And he said, not to, to put it in the, the <laughs> most direct way, that the, that the deafest, the, 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 musician, the type of musician that had the most problem with hearing loss were classical musicians. Right. Uh, and he said he could look at an audiogram and know what instrument or type of instrument the musician. Well, yeah, I can too. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Well, yeah. So see, violin players are, have this notch. Right. Well, it's it's not that it's the ear with the notch. Right. So yeah, well, typically yeah, notch. like typically like with drummers, it's more of a left um, notch um, because of the hi hat. Okay. Typically, it's typically. not always, right. but it is. And then violin players, if you're holding it here, right. your left ear, right? Right. right? Yeah. So yes, you can definitely tell um, the t what someone plays based on their test results. Or then you have to say too, let's just say you're a guitar player. Right. Well, where are you standing in relation to the drums? Ah, yeah. You know, that can oftentimes tell uh, yeah. a lot, uh, the yeah. reason uh, behind test results. The, th the reason why it's more prevalent in classical musicians, because uh -huh. they tend to play longer or have longer rehearsals. Right. Now, this is from a study by Marshall Chasen, actually. He's an audiologist out of Canada. And his studies say that uh, because they practice longer mm -hmm. and they tend... Yeah, I'm not sure how to say this exactly right, but according to his, it's because they don't love their music as much as like a rock and roller is going to love it. And they practice longer and they might also have like trumpets right behind them and they're mm -hmm. staying still. Right? Right, right. So I think that's why. Okay. Um, yeah. It has to do with just length of time and where they're sitting and how long they're sitting because they're staying still. Right? right. So they, yeah. And again, the, the rehearsals tend to be longer. Right. Okay, so Julie, I want to know, sitting here on, in New York City where I've lived my whole life, is there, are, are New York audiophiles better, smarter, more attractive people than people in, in Beverly Hills? More attractive. I'm just kidding. Uh, well, no. Okay. Is so there this... a difference in, in what, seriously, what, what are they looking for? Is there a difference, East Coast, West Coast audiophiles, what they want? Well, there's more audiophiles here. Well, of course. There's more audiophiles in New York. Uh, and the reason, I think, is because everyone, well, at least who I see, right, there are more people walking around with head, headphones, earphones, in-ears in New York City than there are in L.A. I mean, everyone's in their cars. Yeah, so you can't, yeah, and they're not listening on headphones, hopefully, in And here, cars. right, in New York, it creates, it gives you your own personal space in a place that's chaos, right? Right, chaos. So people <laughs> care more about it, and there's more noise. Right. So... You know, looking into a quality pair of earphones or headphones, whatever suit, you know, floats your boat, is more important here. Right. That's a lot the, of people use headphones when they fly, you know. So. They do, yeah. So for travelers. But I think that, I mean, from what I've seen too, I mean, just enlightening people on it. Like mm -hmm. introducing them. Like I feel like, you know, if they're coming in for something and, then, and they say something that makes me think they would really like it, then they're, you know, from my pool, again, mm -hmm. and which is all new people. Mm -hmm. So, um I'm spreading the word. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to spread the word. And then there's, uh, to finish up, I guess, is uh, hearing protection and the sensophonics. Is that, that's what you really recommend, right? 
Yeah, for um, custom musicians, earplugs, I really like the Sensophonics plugs the best. Um, Me too. You too, yeah. Me so too. they use a soft uh, silicone hypoallergenic, it's medical grade, and then they use the Edematic Research filters um, for a reduction of 9 decibels, 15 or 25. Um, and then they also make sleeping earplugs, which are great. Um, but yeah, so I do, yeah, I, I'm fitting people for a lot of those yeah, um, in I, LA also. I, I, I use them pretty much every day. Yeah. They're super comfortable. Super comfortable and retain sound quality, um, if that's your goal. Yeah, um, mine is. Definitely. Yes. So um, makes everything, you can actually hear better, I think, in noise with them on, right? Yeah. In restaurants, it, sometimes I use them. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I do, too. I mean, I just used them recently. Nine decibel reduction, takes the edge off the noise, and everyone's talking up and over it because they can't hear themselves. So you actually tend to hear people further away, even. Yeah. Um, like you have supersonic hearing, it's a counterintuitive yeah, because yeah. you know over the counter plugs don't sound so good. They they muffle the sound because right. they take away your ear canal's natural resonant peak. Um, but with these, you can actually I feel like you can hear from further away when you're wearing them. Yeah. Julie, this was amazing. I'm, I'm so good to see you. Did we miss anything? I don't know. I don't think so. If we did, we can talk again. You have to come back to okay. New York. It's, it's so good to be back here. It is? I truly, yeah. I tell everyone in, in L.A. that the thing I miss most is my business and, you know, the family of people that sort of created with that and, of course, friends and family. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's so good to see you. And, yeah. Cool. Well, anyway, I hope to see you back soon. I hope so. And I say this at the end of every one of my episodes. So thank you guys, and I do hope to see you again very, very soon. Absolutely. Steve's the best. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye.